Hey, my name is Larry. I'm with Under the Bridge Flies, and we're going to tie a Holy Grail Caddis Emerger. It's what I got in the vise here, and it's a nice little fly. Um, it's a good fish catcher. You should uh, tie a couple up, or you can holler and buy one. They are really good flies. So, anyway, we're tying these on a size 10, number 135. Uh, Dairiki and the Kershank scud hook. So we're going to put a bead on here and we're using a brass bead. Copper bead, brass, whichever you want to call it. So we got our bead on there. Now we're going to turn our fly around here. And we want to kind of invert it down to start with. Alright, so we're using an 8-0 unithread and red. Red's the color. So we're going to start about the middle of the hook or so and just go back a little bit and snap off that tag in. And a couple more wraps there. And the first thing you're going to put in is a piece of uh, oval tinsel. Opal tinsel. And uh, I'm using the small. A uh, small piece of flashaboo or something like that would work real good too. Uh, you don't want to go much bigger than the small as you know as far as this size goes um, any wider and it kind of just overpowers the bottom of the fly and you can't really see what's going on with the fly so but anyway um, we're just going to tie this piece in and we're going to keep it on top of the hook and we're just going to go ahead and tie on down to about halfway down the bottom of the hook and we'll bring that back up and go back down again. All right, next thing we're going to do is put some dubbing on. Now, I'm using Superfine Wopsy and I'm using Cinnamon Caddis. And I like the way the cinnamon looks on this fly, but you could do it in, you know, olive or black or. You know, um, yellow with a red head or yellow with an orange head. Um, there's a lot of different options on this fly for sure. So, I got my dubbing. Give my finger a little lick there. I got some wax sitting right next to me, but I just like what licking my finger. <laughs> More convenient. Besides, I know where my finger's been. Pressing. All right. Now you want to keep these nice and even. You want it to you know, go up really nice and even, really steady flow. Once you get up to the top where you're going to stop, which is that's where I'm going to stop, so where my thread is, then you just take and you can work your way back because we're trying to build this up as we go and we're going to need a hair bit more dubbing air and that'll do it all right so the next thing we're going to do is wrap our tinsel and you should get about four wraps out of this side See if you use anything a lot thicker, then you wouldn't be able to get them segments in there very well. It wouldn't look right, I don't think, personally, but snip that off. All right, so now we're just going to move our fly towards kind of where it's supposed to be. Grab our pheasant tail, and you want to click off about a dozen, I'd say. Um, about a dozen good pheasant tail fibers. 
probably. No. And what you want to do is you want to clip these up past about the middle or so. That way you're getting good color after the top of your fly. So now we're just going to uh, tie that pheasant tail in right there. Keep that spread out there. Use your thumb to hold it down so it stays spread out there like that. Now the next thing we're going to put in is our thorax. And you can use, I've done a couple with the gray thorax and everything. But on this one, I'm actually going to put it in with the ice dub, a UV ice dub from Hairline. And this is cinnamon as well as what the body material is. But we got that little UV factor going on here. So everybody likes the UV. And we're just going to build this up. And keep in mind, we want to keep, you know, some space in there. So you don't want to go too far into that bead. But you do want to make this thorax. You want to make your thorax um, bigger than the body and a slight, slightly larger than the bead so there we go all right so the next thing you're going to do is you want to push that bead back and you're going to push it back and you're just going to bring your thread right in front of it and once you get that all secured in you can push that bead back some more get that good and tight and wrap that thread off so that bead can't go nowhere now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pheasant tail and we're just going to pull it right over the top of that bead and everything and run a couple wraps around it just to hold it. All right, now you can see we're right down by the eye with this. So if we move our, go ahead and move that up a little, take a hold of that pheasant tail and just give it a tug. It ain't, shouldn't break on you. Um, give it a good tug up and then throw some wraps under that pheasant tail down there by the eye and Then just go back up with your thread Now you see how that raised that all up now. So now when I trim this It's totally away from my eye. I don't have to worry about my eye getting all clogged up there Now you can do this with a lot of materials um, You just got to be careful with it. You know some feathers are just going to break off when you do that, but all right, so the next part of it is our partridge in a pear tree. <coughs> you may remember the partridge family. <laughs> All right, so I got a Hungarian partridge skin. And if you are tying a lot of um, wally wings or a lot of wet flies like this that calls for partridge, this is the way to go. Um, this is the only way to fly, as they say. Uh, you got just tons and tons of tons of feathers on this thing. And these make excellent, these uh, wing feathers make excellent Wally wings. Um, I've been using them on my uh, dry flies now. But the uh, other feathers down the center of the body, they make great. Great wet fly feather, so they splay real nice. So anyway, get that all cut off to where you know you got your stem there, and then you're gonna grab the tip of your stem and you're just gonna pull that back and just be a little careful doing it because like I said, this is rather delicate material, so you don't wanna rip off a whole entire side. All right, so you see how I got that set in here. And I got the inside of the feather pointing to the back, which is rather important if you can keep it to stay that way while you're doing this. But And then what we're going to do is just lay that down on there and get a couple wraps around that just to hold that in place. And we're going to go ahead and trim out that tag in. Now, if you've got one, use it. Um, I got a couple, three, four, five of them laying here. I got Dr. Slick. I got a regular one, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. Just uh, 
grab you some hackle pliers, grab a hold of that burger, and just go ahead and start going up under and try to turn that towards it. Now when you're doing this, you want to kind of coax the feathers backwards. So as you're turning, try to coax them feathers backwards to where they're all going to the rear of the fly. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to get them to go that way. And you just want to go around two or three times. And then you're going to go ahead and capture the stem. Once you get that captured, you can just get rid of that. And we're just going to throw a couple of quick wraps around there to help secure that even better. And we're going to trim off that stem. That stem out of there. Now you can take and use your fingers to splay out and push back any stray flip feathers but you can take and twist this too you see to where you can fill in any empty holes or whatever you might see before you tie this thing off and while you're doing that you just might as well go ahead and go up and clean that head up while you're at it and there we go nice and splayed see how that partridge looks after that like I said, that's the best way to buy those two is buy the skins they're not that expensive and you get a ton more than what you normally do when you buy the little bags you know and anyway so all right so now we whip finish and again you do not have to do that. That is a personal preference of mine. I've learned that if I double whip finish every fly, they hold together a little bit better for me. And I want to make as quality of a fly as I possibly can for everybody. So anyway, that's pretty much the end of it. And as you can see up underneath there, you got that bead showing up and you know you got your UV shows up under there. And it makes for a nice, nice caddis pattern. Anyway, um, give it a shot. Try to tie some up. Um, if you're not a tying kind of person, give me a holler. I'll sell you some of these things. Or these are going to be a great fish catcher. I mean, these things are going to be the bomb here this year. Anyway, uh, appreciate you watching my videos. Hope you all have a blessed day, and we'll see you on the next one.